Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Kush Ngonzo Luesi, an Associate Professor of Integrated Watershed Management, specialized in the economics of water and climate change. I started studying water when I was an undergraduate student doing uh, economics in 1995. And uh, I moved to Masters focusing more on public finance. But in 2007, I started another Master Degree of Science in Integrated Watershed Management. This is what led me to PhD and finally I did a very extensive scientific work which led to international recognition. And I'm here at the Nordic Africa Institute as an African guest researcher. Please come and meet some of my colleagues who are working on water at the Nordic Africa Institute. In many African cities over three quarters of the population live in urban informal settlements. That's a huge number, many of them with limited access to clean water and to decent sanitation services. And um, Africa's cities, at least the big ones, the mega cities, are growing very fast. Uh, and in the next decade, they are likely to double. I would say it's a major crisis. The uh, total area is 7,000 hectares uh, that's being uh, irrigated and the number of households involved in this are like between 10, 10 11,000 households. So, so by, by implication there are about 50,000 people who are supported by this uh, project. Yeah. Yeah. No, what what's saying is there are uh, co concrete improvements in terms of uh, nutrition, how they dress, and household uh, uh, standard of the house, of the house uh, themselves, and, and so on. And there is a lot of cash circulating in this area. And uh, as he explained to us, there is a main dam upstream and there is a primary canal which is uh, like 20 kilometers long and from that main uh, primary canal there are secondary canals which lead the water to dams like this. This is the, the RIB dam, the RIB uh, sedimentation and irrigation project. And they're just about to fill up here the dam, or not filling, filling it up with gravel. And within a couple of years, this whole area here will be a dam, ranging kilometers from here. And here's the tower where the water is going. And then there's a ton tunnel down here where the water will connect to the river again and it will be used in order to balance out dry and rain seasons. Many people are aware of the Renaissance Dam that Ethiopia is building, uh, but we haven't talked so much about irrigation, and that is actually irrigation is the one that consumes water. Uh, it's not that big problem with the hydropower as such, uh, because the water will still flow down. But with irrigation, there will be uh, there, there could be much more losses of water with that could eventually have repercussions downstream. The whole ecosystem and how that is affected when when uh, they just uh, put on water during the dry season instead of the rain season will probably change the whole ecosystem of the river in the long run. You don't get anything for free when you develop. So the question is, how can I? reduce and mitigate the impacts of those developments that, that I want to achieve. Uh, the question is, once I build the dams, uh, what are the impacts downstream or what are the trade-offs between different uses of water, be it agriculture, water supply, energy. So it's not about rejecting something or saying this is bad, it's about understanding its effects, positive and negative. The message I would have for, for uh, the critique uh, is the critique is right, but it's not, it should not uh, uh, um, impede us uh, from, from building infrastructure. 
all dams are controversial, but this dam in particular was exceptionally controversial because that particular fall uh, in, in Bujagale lived and resided the most important river deity among the Busoga uh, uh, the kingdom, uh, the Budagale spirit. Uh, and that spirit, uh, living in uh, the falls, uh, uh, blocked the construction of the dam for about a decade. So it's one invisible spirit blocking a dam which cost, costed almost one billion US dollar. From the video you have seen, there are three basic issues facing Africa. Water availability, water accessibility, and water affordability. This is what we call the three A's. Water availability is due to the shrinking water endowment in the African continent. And according to literature, the main cause is climate change, which is leading to most of the disaster we see in our continent and mainly drought. Water accessibility. Many people live in very remote areas and they can't access water easily. Women and children have to walk long distances to get water. And this is a challenge for the African continent. Water affordability, mainly in urban areas, people are unable to afford the cost of water. And this is simply due to the fact that there is a growing population in the African continent. And in 2050, almost 50% 50 of the, uh, the, the population will be living in cities. And we need to develop water resources. For that reason, we need to develop very sustainable systems that will help us not only to provide water, but to provide also water for other industries like agriculture, uh, manufacturing industries, and so forth. Agriculture is very important, and in that sense, we need to develop irrigation systems. Systems that are sustainable for the future of our continent. Agri development irrigation is not just about dams or about canals. It's also about the system itself, the sustainability of the ecosystem that supply water to irrigation. The governance of irrigation is the main challenge in our continent. We have seen that in many areas where dams have been built, canals have been put in, but they did not function properly. So what we need to do is to call on all stakeholders together, bring them on the same platform and listen to them so that our irrigation systems can be owned by the people themselves for their, their own benefits. But the governance of irrigation is not only the, same pro uh, the only problem. The governance of climate change is also another problem. Because that is the cause of the shrinking water endowment. Scientists are around the globe have developed several agronomic and engineering methods to try to mitigate climate impacts. Some systems are based on policy and they are regulatory systems. These are good for governance. However, the uncoordinated efforts of scientists working all over the world has led to another threat of climate intervention. I'll just give you an example. In the 21st century, scientists have gone ahead with the development of climate engineering methods, what we also call geoengineering. These methods are ranked from less dangerous but expensive to very highly lethal and cheap. And these are exactly some of the method, method they call solar radiation management methods or technologies that have been developed after the works of Professor Paul Crudzen, who won the Nobel Prize in 1995. They intend to reflect back sunlight into space by putting a shield of gases in the stratosphere. But these technologies seem to be very dangerous if they fail. They can lead to three sort of stresses and shocks. Very little, too much, or too dirty water. And this is a threat for irrigation. So as African, we think we have to look at into all these technologies. We look at better on technology that suck carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because they can supplement the efforts that are being done for mitigation of climate change impact. But we will not look blindly at those that reflect sunlight back into the atmosphere because we don't really know what impact they may have on the weather system across the globe. So 
Technology developers, water developers, are warned that they have to do very serious environmental and socio-economic impact of their technologies. We also want a very uh, neutral body to govern this kind of development of technologies across the globe. Finally, we want climate justice for poor peasant farmers so that they can live in the coming century and leave a, a legacy to the next generation.